mama huevo. <laughs> you know, my wife asked me the other day yeah. about that, and she's just like, "Why is that considered an insult? What do you mean?" She thought the same thing I did. She was like, well, "I mean, it just means mother egg, right?" I'm like, "No, it doesn't mean that." No, it's suck, I, suck balls. I know. Yeah. It's like, but I, I, I thought it was funny that she thought the same thing I did. <laughs> I was like, "Mama huevo." Yeah. Mofongo. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one is the two guys there, like Mario and Luigi. Yeah. And then one guy comes out, he's, he's Luigi, he's like, ah, Mofongo. And he just yells Mofongo. <laughs> uh, what's up, everybody? Hey. Welcome to another episode of The Night Funk. We are prepared today. We're not. No, we're not. <laughs> today, we're just going to keep it loose, keep it fun. We're going to have a small subject, but see where it takes us, yeah. as always. But, you know. That's what the night funk is about. Let's just talk about some stuff that's been keeping us up lately. There's been a lot on my mind lately, and this subject matter also has been on my mind for a very long time. Yeah, because you see fucking everywhere during the summer. Yeah. yeah. It's something very prominent here in the South. Uh, yeah. We'll get to that in a moment, but before we uh, start the show, make sure to go look us up on all the socials at the night Funk podcast awesome. on TikTok, Instagram. You can also find us um, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if that's not where you're listening. And we're on YouTube as well, at the Knife on Podcast as well. Yeah. So, you know, go find us. Show us some love. Follow us. We're two away from 100 on Instagram. Yeah. we People are going to fucking, like, uh, uh, <laughs> unfollow just to piss us off. Yeah, we surpassed, like, that count of followers on uh, TikTok, which is awesome. Yeah. But um, it's funny to see how the analytics work mm -hmm. because you see like a giant rise of like traffic coming towards mm -hmm. the podcast, but it then will dip overnight because they, a lot of times, you know, you attract people to your content and then they'll listen to it and only a couple of people are going to like stick around. Yeah. And uh, it's funny to see that dip and then sometimes it goes back up like, oh, they're coming back. No, no, yeah. oh, they're gone. <laughs> oh, they're gone. <laughs> I just oh, like they, seeing where they come from. Like, we have a bunch in L.A. and then a bunch in Houston. I know, like, we're pulling. What? I hope we're pulling Isimo's, uh, uh followers. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop trying to start beef with them, dog. I wonder if there's, like, a, a counter, like, like a group like us in Houston. Uh, or like, like, an Isimo is in L.A. I'm not saying we're, like, just as they're up there with East there, but like there, we're kind of that on the East Coast. Uh, there is a pod, there is a Latino podcast in Houston. I'm not, that not I, surprised, that, but yeah. Th yeah, that that I follow. That's a that's relatively small. Really? Um, yeah, I thought about that too. I was like, bro, if we ever like try to like, like take a trip anywhere, we should yeah. try to look up a local small podcast and be like, yo, can we just like crash an episode of y'all's yeah that'd be fun that'd be kind of cool then we'll crash easy and give them more follows yeah yeah now nah, because they need it <laughs> <laughs> no they don't well i mean or the other ones whatever the hell their podcast is I, I i i i don't i don't know they're not gonna like us they're not they're very californian i live in there yeah I know, but I can you, talk Californian. Yeah, avocado but you, toast. Yeah, but I'm saying like they, they're not gonna tolerate Texas. like me making COVID jokes. They're gonna be like, "Hey, this is a serious matter." It's like, "Fuck you!" I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because as, as soon as I start bringing up the whole fucking Wuhan uh, lab leaks, they're gonna be yeah. like, "This fucking conspiracist over there," even though it's documented. It's fucking documented. Anyway, oh bro, you know what I haven't said in like two episodes? What? Tiananmen Square. Oh yeah. Wow, we really followed off. Yeah, I we, know. we saw that fucking uh, rise in followers. Who's like, it's fucking China? <laughs> it's like we don't need a fucking. Watch our followers uh, start coming up again after I said Tiananmen Square. Yeah, maybe that's the secret. Yeah, we just have to keep like poking the bear that is China. The Pooh Bear. The Pooh Bear. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. it's gonna be the Chinese guy just show up one day. He's just gonna be like, y'all need to shut the fuck up. We man. should go to China and just. Like wear tight red shirts and paint ourselves yellow. And Don't wear to... pants, just dicks out. Get dicks out. <laughs> uh, honey, just eating honey. <laughs> oh, I'm so sick. <laughs> you See know how long a... it takes us to get arrested. That was a method of a uh, of uh, execution way back in the day. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they stripped someone butt naked and they tie you to a boat. Uh huh. And then they make you eat nothing but milk and honey. Oh God. And then they pour honey on you too. And then they put the boat out in the middle of, like, a river or wherever it's going. So you're out in the hot sun with honey all over you. So bugs are coming. Ugh. And then, because of the honey and milk, you're just shitting everything out of you. 
So you're just dehydrated, diarrhea shooting out of you, bugs everywhere, and then they just start eating you slowly. That's fucked. That's justice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what did he do? He looked at me wrong. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he looked at you wrong? Look at me. You're fucking dead. <laughs> he called me a poopy head. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fucking cry. To... <laughs> you oh. know, oh, God damn, dog. Bro, that fucking pasta. That fucking vibrated the table. I know. Jesus. <laughs> but um, that makes me think about it. It's like, you know, there has to have been like points in history where there was an art, like a authorian figure that had his deal with small criticisms and he just took it too far. Like somebody's just criticizing a like leader in power for like some like update complete. Oh, what the yeah. fuck? Is my fucking I think your computer's on. That's weird. Anyways. You just open it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my hentai. <laughs> Yo, why do the chicks have dicks? Don't look at it. <laughs> You'll get a black eye. <laughs> and a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, what? Yeah, but no. Okay, back to what I was saying. Yeah. It's like I know that at one point in time there was probably like an authorian figure that was being criticized for some, some something bullshit and he just took it too far. He was just like, you know what? Fuck that guy. Murder him, his family, throw his kids into fucking slavery. And then anybody that's connected to him fucking, like, just, like, fucking beat the shit out of them. You know you're talking about North Korea right now. Is that North Korea right now? That's what they fucking do, dude. That guy, if some, if, if, uh, it's called, um, generational, uh, punishment or something Mm -hmm. like that. Uh, they give you multiple life sentences. So, if you're the father and you get a life, uh, multiple life sentences, you're, it, it's your grandparents, your mother, your daughters, your sons, your however many life sentences it is. Yeah. That's how many people go to jail. Well, actually, now that I think about it, dude, have you been hearing that shit about Yonomi Park? She's like the North Korean defector that had this crazy story about how she escaped North Korea as a teenager, right? Yeah. But a lot of people were, were digging up information about her, and yeah. they're kind of figuring out that, like, oh, wait, she lied about all this shit. Because she was saying that, like, Oh, you know, we used to have to, like, eat rats and bugs, like, dragonflies and shit out in the fields and, like, all this other kind of stuff. And she was basically talking about, like, how heinous the living conditions were and yeah. all this and that, you know. Yeah. And people all, people immediately were, like, in, like immediately, like, obsessed with her because, one, she's also a very attractive Korean woman. And she's got what they refer to as the heavies. And What's, um, what's her name? Yanomi Park. And uh, basically what they found out is she was on a show a long time ago as a teenager about uh, uh, North Korean defectors, right, in South Korea, right? And what they found out was she's been making this shit up this whole time because what they... Uh, she, she's all right. Huh? She's all right. She got a weird face, like cat face. I don't mind it. I like things that are kind of different. She still looks emaciated. Yeah. yeah, even that picture. Yeah, but I mean, have you seen the fucking have you seen the fucking heavies on her dog? Like her tits are ridiculously big for her uh, for I her mean, body. I, I think it's just like proportion. Like she's just so small. I don't know. Try to look yeah. for like a full body pic if you can find one. I mean, but yeah, but it's it, just it's, it, I mean, they don't seem proportionate to her body because you like, look at the size of her arms and then the size of her breasts. It's just not. I don't know, man. It doesn't look that big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But. That's besides the point. So apparently they, <laughs> they, they, uh, what they uncovered is that she was on this show in South Korea where they basically talked about a bunch of North Korean defectors, sorry, right? we're going to lose uh, a and bunch of our followers because of that. About what? Because we're looking at some chick's tits. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Most of our followers are females. I don't think so anymore. Not anymore? Well, not on, not on our Spotify analytics. Most of them are men. Oh, okay, cool. Never yeah. mind. What's up, bros? Yeah, alphas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we on that and, top. <laughs> Andrew Tate's innocent. <laughs> He's yeah, not. We on that top G energy. <laughs> Anyways, what? <laughs> <sighs> There's no point in even ending this anymore. It's basically they just found out that this bitch is lying. Yeah. Because they basically uncovered shit where they were like, oh, wait, she actually came from a more privileged family in South Korea. And she was only there until 14. And the living conditions that she was under were uh, under in uh, North Korea were a lot more reasonable than everybody else's. Yeah. And everybody who did go through worse living conditions basically said, like, oh, yeah, things are rough, but they're not that rough. 
Like, we weren't fucking eating bugs. The fuck are you talking about? Like, we were just living off, like, what we could find. But, yeah, but, like, we weren't eating rats and shit. Like, we're not fucking cavemen and shit. Like, I mean, I wouldn't have been past. They probably, probably have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, um, it was, like, what that one guy that defected forever ago. There was that video of him running and, like, he's getting fucking shot at. And he gets hit a couple times yeah. on camera. Um, when they took him to the hospital to treat his wounds, he is infested with worms, dude. Mm. Yeah, like they're like pulling out like, like a fuck ton of worms and like all these other parasites and shit. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if he's still alive. Actually, I don't know either. I remember yeah. hearing about that. We're very off topic. We haven't even revealed the topic today. Yeah. Speaking of North Korea, um, we're going to talk <laughs> about Vacation Bible School. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, indoctrination at its finest. Uh, yeah, before yeah, we before rough. before we get into this subject matter, I just want <laughs> any, everybody to know we're gonna go off topic again. We're we're, we're probably gonna go off topic. This is again, this is a loose episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not just that, but like if you have any personal attachment to like a, a certain belief system, and this is just like go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Just respect the fact that like everybody has their own opinion on it. We had our own personal experience with yeah. evangelical churches. We have family that's probably going to listen to this and not agree uh, agree agree with like what we have to say about it. Yeah. But the truth be told, it's not really about their experience and what they think about it. It's our experience and how we felt about it. And I can tell you right now, yes, that's exactly what it is. It's indoctrination at yeah. its finest. Like it's just trying to. A, like get to, into kids' heads mm-hmm. about following a certain mindset that is based around Christianity because you know, yeah. you know, if you you get them young, you get all their money. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, when was the first time you went to vacation Bible school, dude? Like, I can't, I can't even remember. Like, super fucking young because I remember like doing it like almost immediately. Like, it was always a part of some type of summer plan stuff because yeah. I remember like the church that my mom. Uh, used to attend that we used to attend. Yeah. They used to, they used to occasionally put on like little like summer vacation Bible school events and shit, but I don't remember those that much. I was too young to remember. I just mm-hmm. remember that you know it was the typical same old shit. You you went there, you got some fucking bullshit vacation Bible school like um, t shirt, yeah, and you spent the whole day outside playing games that revolved around Jesus. Yeah, somehow Red Rover was a lot about jesus i don't yeah. know how but you gotta break these chains <laughs> you gotta break through these arms red rover people. red rover have you accepted jesus christ into your life yeah no <laughs> <laughs> no i like what well, did yours have a theme uh the early ones i don't remember i remember the the one that i remember the most was when i was in middle school i went to one that was like put on by like a local church yeah. that used to come and pick up the kids in the neighborhood on a school bus yeah yeah and of course, all the kids used to go to it because it's like, why not? You get like a free lunch out of it. You hang I was out with about your, to say that, you, yeah. you, get, you get you get to hang out with your friends and shit. And we're yeah. just fucking around. Like it's fun. You get a free T-shirt, and then occasionally, you know, uh, fucking you watch yeah. Prince of Egypt. Yeah, and yeah. then you know, one of your friends gets diddled, but who cares? Like you just fucking move on about it. Yeah, you go to therapy, you cry, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And they never picked me. I was too ugly. So yeah. <laughs> kudos for not being. Handsome. I was asthmatic, so they were like, "Nah, I get tired fast." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, uh, this he guy, can't hold his breath long enough. He doesn't have enough jump in his giddy up. <laughs> I was a chunky kid. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a clapper on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but like they see the acne on your ass. This one's ribbed. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Starts popping. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's like bubble wrap. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. Uh, no, but no, um, I remember the the one that I went to one time. It was beach themed, and I don't know why. Why are they? Always, I guess because of summer, they're always like water. Yeah, but it doesn't make themed. sense because like the advertisement for it was like you know come get wet with Jesus, and I'm just like no, I don't <laughs> nah, want. I don't want to. It, it's Jesus like holding a, like a boogie board. He's wearing. Flip flops, not sandals. Yeah, flip flops. And then he's wearing like sunglasses. He's giving a thumbs up. Like, but I just like, why don't you just lean on it? It should just be him surfing the cross. Like, <laughs> like or that would be good. or him surfing, but he doesn't have a board because he can walk on water. So he's just like, you know, boogieing. Yeah, they should have done that. They should have done that. Wait, can could Jesus surf? <sighs> I guess so. If he can walk, I assume he can surf. 
what would happen if he got caught in like a like a wave? Like the wave was tall enough to win over him? Mm-hmm. Would it crush him? Because you know he walks on water. Mm, maybe it's just maybe it's like a buoy effect where you just float to the top like, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think it would crush him because I mean that would just kind of like it's it, physics, man. It's kind of, maybe it'd be like Jello, you know? Like you like if you throw Jello at somebody, it just kinda, it's just gonna you're gonna rip through it and you're just gonna come up the uh, top of yeah. it, kind of thing. That that seems like the most logical like thing. Yeah, the most logical thing for Jesus to do is rip through water like Jello. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, um... I mean, his followers are ripping through a little kid's asses. <laughs> <laughs> it's proven. Uh, Look at the numbers. Leave the trans people alone. Shout out to all the Catholics out there. <laughs> hey! Uh, you hear him? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> hey, for real, like, what's the deal with, like, Catholicism and the fucking, like, over... Like, the, the overt amount of, like, flair that they have. Like remember, Dude, like so fucking much. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like the Pope yeah. comes out dressed all in. Did you see the fucking uh, the recent photos of the Pope wearing that puffer jacket? Oh, bro, he's fucking fresh as fuck. That's man. the first time I've ever seen a Pope look fresh as fuck. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But I'm like, we need more of that and less of the fucking like big like yeah. fucking dresses that look like shit that your grandma used to use as a tablecloth. Yeah, bro, that shit is apparently heavy as fuck because there's gold inlaid in that shit, mm-hmm. and then the crown too. The the fucking like. You know, the pointy hat that he wears? Yeah. I forget what it's fucking called. But it's not just that, but the fucking cathedrals are insanely yeah, detailed all, with, like, like, art and gold and fucking I don't understand statues. why they need all the gold. Huh? Like. I don't fucking know. Maybe they just use it as some kind of collateral to fucking cover up all the fucking rapes. Well, most of that gold, yeah, is, uh, is stolen gold from, like, native, like, a lot of it's from uh, Mexico. Yeah, so yeah. so is a lot of the jewels on the fucking crowns that yeah. the fucking like English the, wear. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Like all of that shit stolen. You British fucks. Yeah, fuck y'all. Yo, yeah, but y'all probably Spanish fucks. You probably come to Mexico to get your teeth fixed. Yeah, probably because it's cheap. Yeah, and they do a good job. British people really do have some fucked up teeth. Yeah, they do. Like I, I don't have the best teeth in the world. Like yeah, my teeth yeah. are kind of jacked up and shit. But dude, some British people like. Yeah, I they're... saw one. It was a TikTok. This British guy. He was like. Yes, uh, I am come on here to, he's talking, like, to the show, it's about to go into, like, a dentist if it gets his teeth fixed. Yeah. First off, you just see him talking, he has this fucking snaggle tooth just hanging out of his yeah. mouth. Yeah. And then he smiles. This motherfucker has not brushed his teeth since he was four. Good Lord. He was in his 30s. And it just looked like a pad of just old, rotting food. And it was hard. Mm. And that's what he chewed with. That's what he ate and talked with. It's just a pad of gunk. That's insane. I don't. I don't like. Like I, I. I understand that on that side of the world, they're not like some things like that aren't a big deal, but like you have the technology and it's not a, that expensive to get your teeth fixed yeah. or just to to do the upkeep. Just brush yeah. them. You know. It's crazy. Like going back in time. Like I um, forget to brush a lot, but I still like occasionally brush them. Yeah. Like um. What is it? Uh, it goes back in history about taking care of your teeth because, uh, what was it? Uh, for one, Native Americans they uh, chewed on uh, sinew, mm-hmm. like from like like from uh, like an animal. Uh, they chew on it to get it all loose and like stretchy, mm-hmm. so so they can like tie things together or, or like string their bows. Yeah. Uh, during like Revolutionary War, Civil War, they had their little musket packs of gunpowder, mm-hmm. those little paper uh, packs, and they were hard. And when you would go to like uh sign up for the military they would look at your teeth and they would check to see if your teeth are, st- are straight they close and if they're not wiggling because if they're wiggling you try to buy into one of those things you're gonna bust out your teeth you can't fucking uh load your gun damn yeah so if you ain't got good teeth you don't join so see if you can join the military eat this charleston chew <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. Oh. Oh. <laughs> bro those motherfuckers are it's just cement who the fuck Likes Charleston chews, Old dog. people, dude. I guess that's true. Because they, they take out their dentures and just gum it. The other day at my job, this older um, this older lady that works with us, with us uh, she came by and gave us a bunch of those little, like, grandma strawberry candies. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Dude, I love those, but I'm like, where do you find these? I can't find them anywhere. I loved it whenever we hit a pinata and they're in there. Mm, or yeah. when they're in the candy bags. 
Yeah, but it's yeah. like I always find I always come across the strawberry candies, but can never actually find them in stores. Yeah, like I I don't even know what they're called. And if you do find them, because you can find them in the Mexican stores, actually. Can you? But they're they don't taste the same because hmm. they don't have you know like some of them have that little gooey center. Yeah, yeah, they they they're always just hard. Yeah, I don't like how in the Mexican stores they're called fresa candies and they have a little gay guy on there. <laughs> Fresas. Hola. <laughs> es, hola, son fresa candies. Es hora de putear. <laughs> <Ay. laughs> All right, we're off topic again. All right. Okay. Uh, vacation so, Bible school. All right. So I remember, like, one of the fucking things that I think was like, the, mo- the most appealing thing about going to vacation Bible school it wasn't just about getting a free lunch, too, but these also just hang out with your friends. And yeah. a lot of the shit that we did at these vacation Bible schools was not, like, in any way indicative of our beliefs. Yeah. <sighs> because we fucked around a lot. Mm-hmm. I remember we were just fucking passing farts, like, through the whole fucking, like, like thing. Yeah. I-, I just didn't understand how they would think putting a bunch of kids in, a in like, a church. And trying to make them be quiet and pray. Yeah. Like, how is that fucking going to work? It's not going to work at all. Yeah, just snickering, giggling, doing stupid shit. But also, there's also that level of, like, you know, some kids just don't buy into that shit immediately. Like, like yeah. you know, the, you're telling a group of kids, hey, get on your knees and pray. And that there's always going to be that one kid that's like, how does one pray? Yeah, what do you do? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Because, like... This has always, like, bothered me a little bit. But, you know, some people do not have an internal monologue. No, yeah. So, like, it's, it's, basically, it's basically impossible for them to pray yeah. in their heads. But at the same time, it's like the concept of it is going to be even more daunting because they're yeah. just like, what do I do? Yeah. Like, what, what the fuck do I do? Just like being, like, quiet with your thoughts and just being And it's there. also, like, this weird kind of, like, like prayer is such a weird fucking thing in its in itself because it's kind of like you pray for like the good shit but you also have to consistently praise the higher power yeah and then if you ever like you can never directly ask for something you always have to like allude to it yeah. while also praising them it's kind of like you're you know you can ne- you can never fuck god you can only jerk him off <laughs> to get what you want. It's like God, it's it's me again. <sighs> you know, I've been I've been lusting for Trisha. <laughs> and uh you're really fucking sweet if you got my dick wet for me, you know? So uh Amen. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, like there's probably some there's probably a group of like, people that have had that conversation of just like, look, God, I know you and me don't look eye to eye. Yeah. But the Yankees need this this yeah. this weekend. <laughs> God's a Mets fan. <laughs> Do you see a hand coming down? Fuck you. <laughs> but no, it's just all the like, like I, I love all those comedians that talk about. I was like, why are athletes over there? Like, like praying and like praising God on the field. Like he doesn't give a fuck about your win. Like, like he doesn't care if he's there. He doesn't give a fuck. And then it's like, That's thanks a- God for giving me that home run. And on the other side of the world, like there's a kid fucking starving. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Like the the people who are giving God a shout out already have it good in life. Yeah, they have no, like thousands of thousands Which of I, dollars. I, I guess it's like them showing gratefulness for their experience, but it's kind of like, yo, yeah. God, uh, lean back on the blessings a little bit on this guy. He's yeah. good. Yeah, he's, he's fine. good, dog. Like you can turn away for a second. There's a whole fucking demographic of people over here that yeah. desperately need some help because they then, don't even have water. <laughs> yeah, but then like you see, like it's all these guys that are like out there playing like baseball players, football players, and all this shit. They're over there praising God and shit on the field afterwards. Yeah, being like, my mama told me to to believe in God and and to praise Him every day. And then they turn around, and do fucking coke off a hooker's back. Yeah, and just like plowing her. Yeah, they fucking beat yeah. the shit out of their wife. Meanwhile, yeah. fucking, you know, Wakandaka over there in Africa Wakandaka. is drinking sand. Like, yeah. like, bro. Like, Maybe there's moisture in this dry sand. <laughs> He's drinking the blood of a lizard he just yeah. found under a rock. Like, come on, God. Throw him a Gatorade. <laughs> it's a Coca-Cola catch. <laughs> the kid gets it. I don't like orange. <laughs> oh, Shasta. <laughs> uh, do you have... 
Anything other than RC Cola? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, do you remember RC Cola? Imagine being stuck in the desert and being petty. Like, just be, like you find, like, it's like that joke of like, uh, I think you, that you find a bottle of water. Yes, thank God. Ah, Dasani. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> you can't give me Evian? Like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> I'll take a Fiji. Good damn, God. Come on. A smart water. God. <laughs> Deer Park. Uh, deer Park. Yeah. Eh, huh. I'll drink a Deer Park. Yeah. I'll drink a Deer Park over a fucking Dasani. Dasani does have a weird taste. I don't know what it is. It's yeah. just weird. It's just a weird fucking taste. But anyways, back on vacation Bible school. <laughs> it, yeah. Ours yeah. was, uh, the first one I went to was underwater themed. Yeah. And uh, it was weird because like, <gasps> you know the song, like the, Jesus, Baby Shark? Huh? You know the Baby Shark song that came out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ago? Baby Shark, do 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 Yeah. Uh... I remember it, there was a song that we did, and it was it was that it was Baby Shark, but it was a different like song. Oh, okay, and it was the same like it was like Daddy Shark, and then like Mama Shark was like this. Yeah, and Grandpa Shark is supposed to be yeah, like the, the and Baby Shark. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was that song, but just a different song. So I'm like, someone just stole this <laughs> damn song, <laughs> Uncle Shark. <laughs> He's just rapey as hell. <laughs> Uncle Shark, dude, 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 dude. Uncle Shark gives you a free bike. <laughs> if you just shut the fuck up. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's terrible. Yeah. But um, no, yeah, and then I remember um, <laughs> this is uh, a weird episode of Different Strokes. <laughs> uh, different Strokes. Huh? <laughs> no, um. What was it? I, just the one thing I talked about it in a, a recent episode. It, the weirdest thing to me was they they took a bunch of us. It was all boys because they separated the, <coughs> the the boys and the girls, mm-hmm. and they took us all all these little boys, like five six year old boys, led by an older man into a dark room with no fucking windows, <laughs> and there was like they had like mood lighting, like blue mood lighting to make it look like oceans. <laughs> it was like they were trying to seduce us or something. Yeah, and um. There was a th- luckily there was a lady in there with a bucket of water. She's like, "These bitches about to drown us." <laughs> um, they had it was a a bucket full of ice water, and the whole premise of it was like, at the bottom of the ocean, there's no light, so that's why it's dark here. And now, if you put your hands in the water, this is how it feels down there. It's ice cold. How long can you put your hand in the water for? So it became just a competition between all of us who could hold their hand in fucking ice yeah. water the longest. I think they also fucking forgot to bring up the fact that the the fucking underwater pressure that you would experience yeah. would kill you before the fucking yeah. cold would. Uh, no, that's the pastor laying on top of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and I thought I was thinking back to it after that after we talked about it last time, and I was like, that was a dumb idea because you have these small children leaving their hands in ice water for extended periods of time. Yeah. That's nerve damage. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just damaging their hands. Yeah. So, like, I'm thinking about it. I was like, you know, my hands do go kind of numb sometimes. And it's not because of diabetes, because I'm okay on that. Yeah. So, I'm going to sue that church. <laughs> but it's also just the whole idea. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just like, it. I don't understand how, like, parents can, like, have their kids come back from these experiences and then have their kids describe what they experienced and not make it seem like it's, like, like we went with the, the we went with the preacher into a dark room mm-hmm. and he gave us breath mints to eat for some reason that were very bitter and we all fell asleep. Yeah. Then I woke up with fucking poo-poo in my goddamn, like, butt cheeks. Jesus. Like, I'm just saying, like, yeah. it, 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 it doesn't make sense to me that and the like, parents are like, praise Jesus. He blessed you. Yeah. He, <laughs> it, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it's just vacation. Bible school is just a weird thing. Like, I, I'm surprised more kids didn't get fucking diddled uh, back then. But the thing is, it, it's still happening. Dog. Oh, yeah, it is. It's still happening in these fucking churches, dog. Yeah. It, the the thing that's fucking annoying is just that like you think after a while people would just catch on to like maybe this isn't the most fucking like it's not the best thing in the world because now they're asking people for money 
I know. Yeah, you have to pay to send your kid. Fucking, what's his name? Fucking old man Copeland, whatever the fuck his name is. Oh, fuck, the fucking fuck. devil in human skin. Yeah, the dude, like the villain from the mask movie. Yeah, that's what he fucking looks, looks like. Looks like, dude. You see him with his crazy eyes. He points a finger at that lady when she's asking him, like, why'd you buy that jet from Tyler Perry? Why the fuck do you need a jet? Yeah. And he was like, don't you take pictures. And it's like, oh, calm the fuck down, demon. He's like, the price he gave us, I just had to buy it. And like, then he starts quoting, like, this random sc- scripture that's just creepy as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's just, that smile that he gives her. Ugh. Uh, Put yeah. up a picture of his face uh, in the in the <laughs> video. If I remember, I'll, yeah. I'll try to slap it up there. <laughs> but, like, fucking. <laughs> I just slap up a photo of the, the villain from the mask. <laughs> <laughs> side by side. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or just put up a picture really fast, uh, like a like a split second of that uh, yeah. the nair butthole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, very uh, underrated movie, by the way. Yeah. The Mask is a great movie. Yeah, it is. Going back to the the water thing. Yeah. I don't know what the message was on that. Like they were supposed to have like a message with every activity you do. What was the message of a bucket of ice water or the bottom of the ocean? Yeah, if you don't fucking believe in Jesus, we'll drown you in this That's fucking what, water. It felt like the lady was just sitting next to the bucket, being like, "Come here, children. Come on, circle around. All right, you first. You come over here." Is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, how come they never do like a like a like a different type of like theme that isn't supposed to be some type of like? Well, I feel like everyone that I've been to has been some type of like water based fucking experience That's because it's summer. <laughs> I guess that is true, but I'm just like I don't know. They should have done like a like a like I would understand if they were like oh the story of Jonah and the whale or um, parting the Dead Sea. So they do like a Passover kind of thing. Actually, no, I take that back. I remember one time we went to one that was safari themed. What the fuck does that have to do with Jesus? Because or it, God, because they try to apply it to the fucking Noah's Ark thing. But basically, it was kind of like look at the bounty that God has fucking given us of like fucking animals and shit. I'm what, just, they have Noah up there with dreadlocks? This is Noah King, too? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't fucking, like, it's just weird, like, how they try to just circle back and put this all together for kids. But what's, what's interesting is that this only really seems to happen on the Christianity side and not on the fucking, like, Catholic side. But yeah. also, it... So I know it's not always evangelical churches. It could be, like, Baptist, you yeah, know... Yeah, the Method- one I went to was Baptist. Baptist, yeah. Methodist, Pentecostal, shit like that, you know? Mm-hmm. But... Uh, you don't really see like do do they have these type of like summer events in other religions like in Ju- do they have it in Ju- Judaism do they have it in Islam? I think for them it's just like studies. Yeah. Like you go to study like in Jewish culture you go study the Torah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure in like. Uh, oh, but one thing that is cool is like if you do what? have like a what I, I remember this one thing um, that I heard about that if you are. Like a part of a Jewish bloodline, you get like a free trip to Israel. Yeah, they have to like you get to visit like the homeland. Yeah, which I'm like, that's pretty dope. I mean, it's like if you show up and you just got hit by a fucking missile. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially right fucking now. Yeah, uh, my buddy, uh, uh, he got he went when he was younger, and he said it was pretty cool. Like he was like, yeah, I probably will never come back. But you well, know. how long has fucking Israel and uh, Palestine been fucking fighting? Yeah, since Jesus like, fucking died, I guess. Uh, I don't understand what the fuck they're fighting about. Uh, it's the whole. It's I think it ties back to like the whole biblical thing because the Palestinians are like, were mm-hmm. like the I I don't know my buddy, my buddy who does all the theology stuff. He's probably listening to me being like, "You're a fucking idiot." Yeah. But like, I think it was like the Palestinians were like considered like the bad people, and I don't know. So the Palestinians are basically the fucking um, yeah. the Akoski from uh, Naruto, and then Israel is the hidden leaf village. There you go. And the- <laughs> is Naruto uh, uh, Jesus? Huh? Yeah. 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 And okay. then fucking uh, Satan is Pain, like the main fucking dude that like, they killed the fuck out of his like um, out of his. I don't own. know Naruto. So yeah. Yeah. It's Naruto. Naruto. It's not. Nar- it's not. It's such a fucking easy like wor- word to say. Naruto. It's not Naruto. It's Naruto. It's spelled N A R U T O. Naruto. But it's it's pronounced Naruto. Naruto. <laughs> it's just like super annoying because it's just like it's not even remotely close. Like they even say it in the clips, Naruto. Like it's just like no, I've never never in the context of anybody who's ever watched the show has ever said Nar- uh, uh, it's Naruto. Naruto and Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just not even gonna fucking follow through with this one. 
It's just like uh, yeah. It's, this reminds me of the shit that I used to do um, in high school. I used to always troll like the anime fans because yeah. I mean I'm I love anime. Let's not get one thing wrong. But I love I used pissing to, them off because I'll be like, hey, you're eating one of the mangoes. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, no the the thing that used to really annoy people back in the day, which I don't understand why this was a thing. So here, let's 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 uh, let's clear the air a little bit. The word anime just means animation. Yeah. It does not specifically mean Japanese animation. Because guess what? Not every anime is Japanese. Some of it comes out of fucking China and Taiwan yeah. and fucking the Philippines. Like, it, it, there's anime that comes through all three Asian countries. It's not solely Japan as a whole that produces all the fucking goddamn... Yeah, they're the most prominent, yeah. but does they're it... not the only one. Other Asian countries contribute to the anime world. Yeah. Korea does a lot of, like, slice of life shit. So, a lot back in the day, a lot of people used to get fucking mad when you would refer to a non, I guess... Japanese. Uh, I guess a non-Japanese yeah. like animation as anime, even mm-hmm. though that's basically what it is. It's just animation. So whenever Ugh. I would jokingly be like, oh yeah, my favorite anime is Spongebob. They would get really yeah. fucking mad and be like, that is not an anime. I was like, well, anime means animation, you dumbass. So yeah. you're fucking stupid. Fucking weeb. Yeah. <laughs> like, you really care this much because, like, I'm yeah. in, the, you think I'm insulting? Like, one, I love animation. Yeah. If I could flip the camera, I have a whole bookshelf of just animated things. It's so much hentai. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> honestly, fucking uh, Sweat and Stope is pretty damn close. Except I did not read that. My wife did. The premise of that is really fucking weird. It's basically a girl that sweats profusely and she ends up like hooking up with a guy who's trying to find like the perfect detergent. Oh, is she like super stinky or something? Yeah, yeah, Yeah. but he's like super into her stinking shit. Like it's really weird. She read the whole, she collected the whole series. That's why it's on the bookshelf now. Oh, I'm watching that new one that's on Netflix, the like 100 things to do bucket list thing with zombie and thing yeah i haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet it's actually really good because it's funny because the main guy it's like it starts out with him like just doing a monotonous like salary job and shit and it mm-hmm. sucks like he's getting fucking taken advantage of it's a predatory company and then like he wakes up one day goes down and you know fucking zombies and he's getting chased and shit and the whole time he's having like an inner monologue being like oh no i'm gonna be late for work oh no i'm gonna be fucking late for work if this keeps going i can't make it to my bike blah 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 and then finally it, it clicks he's like oh Everyone's dead. I don't I don't have to work. I don't have to work. And he's all happy and shit. Yeah. All the blood turns into like like multicolored splatters and stuff. <laughs> and he's so happy. And then like the first thing he does is he cleans his apartment. <laughs> like he's like, I haven't had a chance to clean my apartment in three years. And he doesn't. He's just throwing the trash out the fucking window. Oh, uh, dude, if you ever <laughs> want to go down a fucking rabbit hole, I fu- uh, on TikTok I found this account though. It's like it's like a it's like a semi documentary s thing, and yeah, it's yeah. called like the life of a corporate slave in Japan, mm-hmm. and it's following the life of this thirty year old girl who basically works for some kind of like she's like she's she works like a like a a sales position at some fucking company oh, in Japan. Is she the one that sleeps in that one like uh, like internet cafe? Yeah, that, yeah, that was like yeah. one of the episodes. Um, but yeah, she does have a place of her own, of course. But like, basically, what my dogs are fucking barking. Uh, but basically, what it shows is just like she does. All she does is fucking work, and then she barely gets enough sleep. Mm-hmm. She barely gets a chance to get a home cooked meal. She only gets one day off out of the week, and the, that day she basically uses to like get groceries, clean her apartment, do her laundry and then go to sleep early. Yeah. Cause on, on a, on a weekly basis, she's running on like three to four hours of sleep. Mm-hmm. She's eating everything like convenience store food. Yeah. And she's constantly being scolded by her fucking like, uh, employers. And then, uh, even when she does good, it's not enough for them. And they, she still, it's like, it, like, it's just crazy. Like the, on some of the episodes culture. she has on some of the episodes, she has like a full, like, there's uh, like 10 to 15 mental breakdown before having to snap out of it and get back to work. Like it's Jesus. insane. Yeah, it's pre- it's predatory companies over there. Like they, it's, it's so prevalent. It's just normal. Like that's why you see like the salary man just like asleep on the fucking ground outside. <clears throat> or um, what is it? A lot of them just snap and just get drunk and go fucking nuts. Yeah, dude. Like I, that's the thing I'll yeah. never understand about like corporate like – anything yeah people who just live and breathe like working 
Like I understand it's important to stay busy because yeah. if you if you take it too easy, I mean, you know, you can get behind in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like for me, I have to stay busy because like I end up going through like a mental like decline if I don't stay busy. Yeah. Because you know, I get inside my own head, the intrusive thoughts come in, and next thing you know, I go through like is, an existential crisis. It happens to me a lot actually if I don't stay busy. Because the thing is, like, I don't know what it is about my ADHD brain. It, it'll go from, like, huh, I don't have anything to, to do. What would happen if the sun exploded? Like, <laughs> like, like, my brain literally goes there immediately. We wouldn't know for 12 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Because it would take that long for it to, like, actually, we'll see it. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, for 12 minutes, it'll look normal, and then finally just be like. Yeah. And then we feel, like, the effects of it and shit. Yeah. And then, like, and not just that, but sometimes, like, TikTok sends me spiraling sometimes because they'll, like, I remember one time I was watching this whole thing where they're, like, the Smithsonian's been covering up these artifacts that they found in a pyramid that sh that were clear artifacts of humans riding dinosaurs. Yes, the Aztecs rode Triceratops. <laughs> you can't tell me they didn't. Okay. Fuck you, <laughs> fucking Britain, trying to cover this shit up. You're well, trying to... It was Spain. Was it Spain? Yeah, it's Spain, dude. Whatever. They're basically... That's why we speak Spanish. They're just Spanish-speaking Brits, dog. I know, but that's why we speak Spanish. Mm. Yeah. Oi, pues. Ay, no. Hola. Subete en el coche. Oh, God. I fucking hate how they... Talk, I hate dude. the way they fucking talk. I told you about that one time. I, when I worked at the grocery store, I was a cashier when I first started. And this uh, couple from Spain was, I guess, visiting Delonica because... You know, you come to fucking America to visit Delonica. <laughs> all the fucking yeah. places to go. I guess, like, had, I guess they had friends that lived here or something. Let's go know. to where they started the gold rush. Yeah. <laughs> but um, let's go pan for gold on yeah. vacation. Hey, man, you can still find some gold out there. I know. We yeah. went. We, we, we I've gone before. Yeah, it was fun. The caverns are cool. Yeah. Exploring the caverns. Yeah. Um, what is it? Um, what was I saying? Yeah, the Spaniards that fucking came in there. So they were talking to each other in Spanish. So I was like, oh, I'll talk to them in Spanish because they're probably from out of town. And I asked them, like, in Spanish, like, oh, the, the, where are you from? And they're like, oh, we're from España. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. Uh, and I started talking to them and being like, oh, this is, you know, Zanahoria, blah, blah, blah. And they kept correcting me. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Zanahoria. I'm like, that's what I fucking said, all right? And they were just being fucking pricks, dude. Yeah. God, I fucking hated them. I put their tomatoes on the bottom. They're just mad because they can't not not speak like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> or uh, Sylvester, uh, Sylvester the cat. Yeah. Suffer and suck at that. That was all like Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> not Keith. Not Keith. <laughs> <laughs> all right, vacation Bible school. Uh, um, after it was, um, I helped out one time. It was, it was all right because I helped out with the little, little kids. So it wasn't really too much like trying to get them to like go with like a, a like a Bible verse or anything. Yeah. It was just keeping them busy. Yeah. And uh, so what I got to do was um, they set it up for the kids. They It's like a felt wall and it looked like water. Yeah. And uh, they they have little fishing poles. So they put it over and then you grab this thing, give it a few tugs and put like a little fish on a magnet on it. And they pull it up. And it's like, oh, you want a fish? Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I don't remember. I remember they used to always put on like little fucking like, um, like games and shit that yeah. you could play there and stuff. I don't remember a lot of them. I know most of them were probably just like you know like schoolyard games and shit. Yeah. Right? The thing that I used to fucking hate, um, this one uh, summer like Bible thing that we used to do. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't fucking um, vacation Bible school. It was just a thing they did all throughout the summer to keep like kids like. I guess busy on Wednesday yeah. nights, right? Every Wednesday at the place, um, it was a youth group. It was a youth group, and they usually just call it campfire. Yeah, and because uh. uh, when you'd go there, they'd be outside and they have a campfire going. You get to roast marshmallows with your friends, right? And then uh, for some reason, uh, our math teacher from high school sh would show up and play the acoustic guitar and just be like, you know, I was trying to fuck yeah, the kid. Yeah, Jesus is bussing, <laughs> bussing. <laughs> Jesus is bussy. Bussy. <laughs> but, uh, no, 
fucked if he just shows up with a Bible. He's just like, and the Lord said, we give unto flesh to him. He just burns his fucking hand. <laughs> Every time I see Jesus up on that cross, I can't help to think he looks kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God. We should get a little cross in here. We should get a uh, the buff Korean Jesus. Huh? The buff Korean Jesus? Yeah. No, you know what we need? Mm. We need a giant crucifix with Bigfoot on it. <laughs> there you go. Like he yeah, well, I mean yeah. Th- 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 that's a Sasquatch. And that's my uh the the watch a uh, duck. I'm gonna make him a little mullet. Oh god, that'd be fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just get some felt. Yeah. 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 I'll I'll put it together. Yeah. Put him on a little truck. Yeah, <laughs> I thought about doing the same thing to like my little Saitama statue because I can easily put a wig on him. Knock him out, yeah. <laughs> oh God. He looks like he's wearing something fucking a nagger would wear. Yeah, just like the gold shirt with gold pants. Okay, so boots. did you see this whole thing recently about that like uh, that Mexican music group that went to Mexico? No. Okay, so I don't know the name of this group because I'm not really that in touch with Mexican music. I know they have that this one hit song and they have like a woman uh, in their group, right? Yeah. But they're from uh, they're from Washington State, and they uh, they they made this group. The song got really popular, and they finally got to go to Mexico to perform. And when they were interviewed by a Mexican news station, and they were yeah. like, "What do you think about uh, Mexico City?" They complained. They were like, yeah, we don't like the food down here. Like, I don't really, I'm not into, like, oh my God. one of them, one of them literally said, yeah, I'm really delicate with food. I basically only eat just plain chicken. Like, I don't even like hot sauce. He just lost, he just, like, ruined their career. Yeah, and then the, yeah. Gir- the girl was just like, yeah, I don't, un- I don't understand why it's so noisy here. Oh and then another God. guy was just like, yeah, I think the food in Washington is better. Go back to fucking Washington. And then they immediately yeah. backed up their whole shit because obviously the whole internet just fucking started clowning yeah. them, right? Because they were like, these fucking no sabo ass kids went to fucking Mexico City, got to try the food. Yeah. They, they got to perform like for their fans down there. And they basically just took a shit. Now, I understand that uh, Whenever like one of them had talked about it, they had said that this was the first time they had ever been to Mexico City. Yeah. So maybe they're not used to Mexico City in general, right? But because I mean, obviously, like every region has its own like culinary differences, you know. Yeah. So maybe it w- might have been that. But at the same time, you just fucked up. Like one, you you are insulting a large demographic of your fans yeah. by saying that it sucks over here and you prefer America when. It's very like evident that you owe a lot to them, and <laughs> yeah, in your fucking music. <laughs> yeah, it, it was yeah. it was insane. I need to look. Up, I'll I'll send you the whole thing okay. like later. But it, it was really interesting to see just like how like like the, the like these Gen Z kids. Like I like how Gen Z kids are fucking fearless to express themselves, mm-hmm. and they're fearless. To, they're fearless to tell people like how it is, you know. Because I feel like. The gap between millennials and Gen Z is not that much. You know, we no. mean equally just as hard. We have different, like, likes, of course, when it comes to music and culture and yeah. stuff like that. But we still understand each other to a good, better than how, like, basically how, like, like Gen X and millennials kind of got uh, got on together pretty decently. But yeah. I think but, we I think we're more decent with the well, Gen Z kids. You well, it's because you know, but because you know, Gen X, millennials, and uh, Gen Z. All of them hate boomers. Yeah. No one got along with the boomer generation. What's the generation before the boomers? I don't know. I don't know. But whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like since Gen Gen X, like, I mean, I, I, obviously Gen X, they complain about a lot of shit the millennials do, and they complain a lot of shit about Gen Z. Like, a lot of them are not up to, like, yeah. current day, like, like politics. I mean, I complain about kids all the time. Like, it's just like. Yeah. I mean, there's a certain level of bullshit that every generation is willing to put up, but even, but it bleeds through sometimes, you know, like for me, I've always kind of felt a certain way about certain politics. You know, Mm -hmm. I feel like some politics are important, but I feel some of them are a little overblown and fucking like just like a little bit ridiculous. I can't wait for this next election coming up. Yeah. When all these uh, kids, all these, all these kids coming out of high school that are turning 18. Yeah. That's, they're gonna change your shit, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's 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 just one of those things where, uh, a lot of times, you know, the the generational divide, uh, 
isn't always a bad thing, but sometimes like there is like a divide as far as like what we like and don't like. Yeah. And I it's it's not it's not like anything against Gen Z kids for being brutally honest. I mean, they were honest about their their personal experience, but it also just kind of flashes a big like, you know, no ball on the forehead for them because it's just kind of like like you're like you you represented a group of people and you basically turned on them by telling them you don't like what they like. Yeah. It's it's kind of like you a, shed on their on their home. It's kind of like what's going on right now with uh, Tyler Childers right now because he just released that like in your love song. Yeah, what about it? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah, but the video's uh, nice too. Yeah, it's a nice video. I enjoy the song. I enjoy yeah. him as an artist. But this, like, a lot of people felt like, oh, he only did this as a kind of like a response thing for the whole like Jason Aldean thing. But the Jason Aldean thing is its own separate fucking bullshit. Yeah. Jason Aldean's, like, bullshit. One, he's a racist fuck. He's always been a racist fuck. It's documented. People have talked about it. This one lady on TikTok had a great story about, like, she had a great experience with um, the country artist uh, Tim McGraw. Yeah, the handicapped girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But whenever she had a chance to meet Jason Aldean, Jason Aldean basically brushed her off because she was a mixed race and because she was handicapped. Yep. And that's just like, you like know. he said to her, I don't have time for this. Yeah. And walked away and started talking to other fans. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. But yeah. not just that, but it's also, I love this current generation of new um, outlaw country artists that are mm. fighting back against this corporate bullshit country art. Like, like the reason why most people hate country music is because they think all country music is that fucking poppy country bullshit you hear on the radio and that's promoted on cmt television yeah, i'm driving my chevy yeah all that fucking bullshit that is not true country what it's was fucking my fault like wailing jennings jennings uh fucking um uh, uh chris uh offerson or is it cofferson whatever whatever i'm making yeah. a, i'm making a dumbass of myself trying to remember their names because uh, i there's only a few of them that i've uh, listened to johnny cash has always been my like yeah, old it's favorite johnny cash willie nelson willie nelson Randy of course Jennings, yeah uh, willie nelson was one of the first people to fucking make a song about gay lovers you know and but yeah. no one ever bats a fucking eye at willie yeah and he made a whole album about uh or uh johnny cash made a whole album about uh uh for native americans yeah yeah it's like it's crazy and then that uh, he has that one song about like saluting the flag and all that shit. Because the thing that people seem to forget is the reason why Outlaw Country was made mm -hmm. was to disband this pro, like don't question anything patriot, uh, like patriotic mindset. Because yeah. that's what the government wants. They want you to fall in line and be like, yes, yeah, support America no matter what fucking faults that we fucking do. Because you know we definitely didn't fucking like for almost like two decades try to display like displace black families by introducing crack into the fucking community so we could disrupt everything that that yeah. that could potentially help them out and their own benefit in the future like the amount of shit that the government has done to fuck over minorities and fucking disenfranchised yeah. groups in america is fucking ridiculous it's the coke zero it's really hyping me up right now yeah it's Vacation Bible school. But, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But no, that's another thing. Religion, too, does that bullshit, too. Yeah, it's the same four court songs talking about Jesus, how much Because the loves thing you. is, religion will be the first fucking place to be like, we. Jesus will accept you for who you are, except if you're gay. Or Ex if you don't, you know, come from the same tax bracket. Yeah. You live in the wrong neighborhood or your skin's a little mm, not white. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That you like. You've heard of people like going to churches and the church, the people at the church goes like, hey, so we just wanted to touch, you know, that, you know, we don't think there's a good fit for you here. Um, there is another church down the road, though, that might fit you more. And it's like, you know, it's usually a church of that person's ethnic origin. There's a and lot of yeah. people. There's a lot of people that buy into that super church bullshit. And let me tell oh, you, God, don't, yeah. don't be the fucking first one to forget. Super churches. Look, shout out to all the people that listen to us that are from fucking Houston. Like shout out H Town, all that shit. Yeah. But don't forget what fucking Joel Olstein did to y'all when that fucking when those streets were flooded. He closed his fucking church doors because he didn't want fucking stinky wet people to get in there. Yeah. And by stinky wet people, I do mean Mexicans. Yeah. He did not want them in there. Or he black people. Or black people. Or he anyone didn't, that didn't go to his church. Anybody that was a shade. Or even that word, that, even the people that did go to his church, he no one was allowed in. Exactly. He said the roads were, I remember that it was on the news down there because 
He told everyone, hey, the roads are flooded. It's not safe to get there. Uh, don't try coming to the church. And then one guy went in his, like, fucking, like, S10 truck, drove down the highway to the fucking church. And he was like, yeah, there was about, like, an, maybe an inch of water on the road. And when he gets to the church, yeah, it's completely dry here. It's, like, above the water line. It's completely fine. Their church didn't even experience any water damage. No. And uh, inside, he said, if you look inside, you can see supplies just sitting in there. Like, it was, like, baby formula, diapers, food, clothes, Yeah, they probably everything. didn't even hand that shit out. They finally did because of him. Like, the guy, he took his phone, videoed himself walking to the church, like, from mm-hmm. his truck after he drove it there. And he's like, yeah, so I made it to the church, Joel. Like, what's the excuse now? Mm-hmm. And then, meanwhile, Joel was, like, fucked off in the middle of, like, the ocean in his fucking yacht. Yeah. Like, he, and he had no fucking worries in his life. And it's just, like, all these people, like, it's a lot coming out of fucking Texas with those people. Like, uh, fucking uh, Ted Cruz, that motherfucker, when they experienced that huge blackout because of the ice storms that Uh happened. And he wanted to blame his daughters. Like, oh, no, my daughter and her friends wanted to go to uh, the Cancun or where the fuck you went to. And the people were like, yo, bro, you're supposed to be here helping us. You said you were going to help us, but you fucked off and went to the beach instead. Yeah. And they forced his ass to come back. And there's and the whole power grid is still fucked. Like people are experiencing blackouts. Uh, my father in law, who is uh, wheelchair bound now after an accident, he was without power for like I think like a week and a half. Yeah, because of like a heat wave that hit down there. Mm-hmm. And uh, we pulled in with the rest of the family to get him a, a generator. Yeah, and it was just like, like come on, Texas, like y'all gotta get your shit together, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's fucking yeah. ridiculous, like, how much people will buy into this fucking kind of, like, early manipulation. Because here's the thing that's been really interesting. It's been running a lot. This has been my night funk lately. Yeah. My night funk lately is this whole, like, UFO disclosure shit and how eerie it is. Because the thing is, people are starting to notice that there's been a bunch of sightings of actual fucking UFO crafts being yeah. followed by fucking, like, F, like F-50 like fighters and shit, whatever the yeah, fuck they're called. They yeah, they, like, they're, they're being, like, fucking... Uh. Almost as if they're not being pursued, but they're testing them out and shit. But it fucking doesn't feel real. Or if they're, like, escorting them. If they're escorting them or they're testing out the technology or some shit. But the thing is, all of it feels eerie and it feels like a distraction for some type of, like... so. Because here's the thing. There is always this idea, like... Do you remember uh, the whole concept behind Project Blue Book, right? Yeah. It's like the it uh, it's like a, this conspiracy of like if we can make it seem like there's an external enemy coming to attack the world that somehow the world will band together and form one united world government yeah. in order to fall everybody into control, which is basically the shit that they've been trying to do ever since the very beginning with religion. Yeah, they try to do it with religion and it failed. And then they try to do it with, like, you know, American, like, patriotism through the fucking, like, war efforts. And that failed as well. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's always going to be defectors. Now they're trying to fucking, like, obviously because the MK Ultra shit didn't work. Because they, they fucking gave fucking Char- Charlie Manson over there a bunch of fucking acid. And he just tripped in the fucking desert and just sucked dick the whole time. Bro, we're going down a fucking rabbit yeah, hole. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but listen, listen, listen. I, I, I'm getting to the point. I this just whole, wanted to talk about vacation. This whole school. UFO thing, it, 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 it falls back into the whole Project Blue Book thing where they're just like, they are going to try to fake an invasion. Yeah. Nobody's going to believe this shit for a fucking second. And as soon as they figure out, like, oh, okay, nobody's buying it, I think they're already going to give up on the idea because as soon as they had this whole, like, like briefing thing, the, the consensus on the internet was just like, who gives a fuck? Rent is too high. People yeah. are starving. Homelessness is at an all-time it's high. Like we can't afford anything. Yeah, like, like, what do I give a shit about fucking UFOs when we're still fucking letting Joel Olstein fucking like have all this goddamn money because churches don't have to get taxed? Yeah, churches just get away with not having tax. Oh, uh, did you see that fun loophole you can do to fuck with the church that that is uh being shitty? What? Uh, see if they're doing any uh, if they say anything about like Republicans in their like sermons mm-hmm. or like any sort of campaign thing. Yeah, or any anything that's not religious talk. If yeah. it's anything that's political, you can fill out this form uh, through the IRS, and the church gets taxed. Yeah, yeah, because n- it no longer becomes like a church; it becomes like a like a polit uh, yeah politician, like a, a, it's like a political basically. thing, and it, yeah. they have to tax that. Yeah. So yeah, 
there was a uh, one video of uh, this one pastor. He was over there yelling, being like, "If you're a Democrat, you're the devil." Blah blah blah. So someone did that to him, and uh, he was all pissed off like afterwards because he was like, "Now nah, they're trying to shut us down because they want us to pay taxes and blah blah blah." Well, we ain't gonna do that. We're shutting down and blah blah blah. Those other bullshit. Well, the amount of tr- money that these churches like. Here's the thing. There's a lot of small churches throughout America yeah. that probably don't make a lot of money. They just make enough to keep the lights on. Yeah. But I feel like if a church is bringing, like, one, all the money that goes into a church needs to be put on, like, it needs to be documented. Mm-hmm. If they're making over a certain amount of money, they need to at least pay a portion of taxes. Yeah. But once you get into the mega church, like, mega church, like, fucking category, by all means, they need to be taxed like mm-hmm. a motherfucker. Yeah, we have that. What? Uh, what's it over here? Free Chapel. Yeah, this thing looks like a fucking stadium now. Yes, and yeah. it's they fucking have live streams and all that kind of shit. Yeah. They have all expensive camera equipment, all mm-hmm. this shit, and like you know how they, they have like a little fucking like nice chapel for weddings and shit. Yeah, dude. yeah. the the amount of money you got to pay to fucking rent that bitch out mm-hmm. to have like a nice fucking cool like photo op wedding and shit. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. They're profiting. Yeah. They're profiting off the fucking shit that's been paid by donations from fucking people yeah. and believers. It's fucking insane. Someone get Alex Jones on the fucking phone right now. <laughs> well, no, the thing about the Free Chapel, too, is I heard that they um, uh, they repaint the walls, like, every, like, I, either every fucking day or every other day. What is it? The cover of the fucking... Uh, the sin? The, <laughs> the, 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 the cum stains they leave on the yeah, walls? Yeah, because they make so much money. They're like, oh, I'm coming. No, oh, what is it? Joel Osteen. They found uh, money. It's the in cover the walls. up the scratches of little kids clawing yeah, at the door. <laughs> it's fucking... Yeah. But no, yeah, Joel Osteen shirts. They found fucking m- wads of money in the walls. This has become an anti Joel Osteen podcast. Yeah, fuck that guy. Fuck him. He's a, he's a fucking demon. Fuck, too, jo- man. fuck Joel Osteen and fuck that other old fuck. Yeah, all of them. All these all fucking these mega-, mega church motherfuckers out there. Yeah, fuck all of y'all. Yeah, and so many of them are so fucking predatory too, yeah. dog. Because it's worship just been, the dollar. Well, it's not just that, but it's not just that. But the, there's been so many cases where they've opened up where they were like they were molesting people in the yeah. choir groups or molesting people in their congregation. They were having sex behind their wives' back with fucking people that were like, oh, yeah. oh this guy's like the he's the main man to Jesus himself. I mean, look how fucking successful his. Oh, dude, his, I want to see if any of them are in uh, Epstein's little black book. Uh, that is true. Yeah, they haven't they haven't released those names yet. Have no, they? they haven't. They're supposed to I think uh, this year. Yeah, and it's funny how the, all that shit was coming up around the same time they were having that UFO brew. Like I'm saying, yeah. it's all a distraction. Don't believe the smoke screen. Yeah, I mean aliens are real, but I mean they're just trying to distract. But us right we've now. known about this since the 1930s, dog. Like people have been speculating that aliens have been real for a long fucking time. Yeah, they're just confirming our beliefs that yes, it is true, and. They basically all they're doing is like they're just they're just shouting out what we've already known, yeah. but there's nothing that we can do about it. Like even if we even if we do find out that aliens are real and we come into contact one, aliens aren't gonna do shit to us. We're not gonna do shit to the yeah. aliens because like I've like I've said before, Earth is nothing but a fucking Bucky's to them. They just stop by, they get their fucking uh, caramel popcorn, yeah. they fill up on gas, and they get the fuck out. Like they don't give a shit. Like that's that's what um that's what the Earth is to these fucking extraterrestrials. They they said that, you know, uh, some of the reports have said that these people, uh, these aliens have been stopping by for almost like forty thousand years, yeah. which is insane. That means they were coming around the time the dinosaurs were just chilling, you know. Yeah. So when cavemen fucking saw them, of course they were just like, "Who gives a fuck about this fucking thing?" Like, oh, oh, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, they just like, throw a rock at it. Like yeah. you're not gonna touch it. It it's it it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if aliens are real or not. We are never going to come in contact with them. And if we do, all that's just going to happen is going to be like, look what we found. Poke it with a fucking stick. Yeah. Or the government's going to come and shoot you in the fucking head and drag this fucking alien body away and throw you in a well somewhere. Yeah. Then you become Bane. Huh? Because that's what happened to Bane. What? Yeah. He, he found got, aliens? No, he got thrown into a well and then he became fucking Bane. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're, you're the movie. Yeah. I always... It's a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the it's weird every, uh, origin story of it. I don't like that origin story. I like the, I like the luchador that gets cr- like pumped up full of fucking roids and shit. Yeah. I like that backstory. But um, what is it? Because he's not, uh, he's supposed to be like one of the smartest. He's no, he's to, pretty smart. Um, he but the venom makes him dumb. Like the the the, the oh, chemical yeah, he pumps it ma- steroids. Yeah, it makes <laughs> yeah. him fucking ridiculous. No, but he's supposed to be one of the smartest like yeah. uh, enemies that I mean, Batman's he, ever he had. Best Batman. A yeah. lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. But um 
I was going to say something about the alien thing. Just to kind of get, of, of, get <laughs> off of the whole conspiracy <laughs> side. Uh, let's bring it back to a comedy. Um, what do you imagine, there's comedy their, what do you imagine the cons- their drugs are? There's, there's comedy in the conspiracy. Let's okay. think. Like, what if aliens came down and just had the dankest fucking weed ever? Uh, like, I saw a TikTok, and it was this black guy. I mean, like, he was like, aliens come down. He's like, he was like, hate this shit, man. This is like quantum shit. <laughs> and he hits it, and he's like, hey, just smell it. Just smell it. And he's like, no, nah, I'm going to hit it. And he hits it. He starts coughing, but he's phasing in and out of time. <laughs> and he's like, bro, I told you, just smell it. <laughs> and he's just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but yeah. It's funny that we're on the subject of Batman, because let me tell you, <laughs> that I don't know if you've ever had to go to a Sunday school like church meeting, and you ended up having watched an episode of Bible Man. You remember Bible God, Man? Dude, no, I don't remember <laughs> watching it, but my wife, she has... So many thoughts on Bible Man. We can do a whole episode on Bible Man if you want. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you sh- I mean, she she can come and yeah. bring the research. No, she doesn't even have to bring it, bro. That shit's embedded in her head. That Veggie Tales and uh, just anything that was on PBS. <laughs> yeah, Veggie Tales is really interesting, man. Because the thing is, like, they can't directly say that God is a vegetable, so they had to <laughs> imp- they had to imply yeah. God's existence without ever being. Because it would be so funny what if kind of vegetable do you think God is? Uh, like, I thought I just thought it'd be funny. Like the clouds separate. He's just like a cantaloupe. <laughs> like <laughs> that's not a vegetable. That's a fruit. Uh oh. That's that's the point. Yeah, he's not like you. They're like like to them the idea. Of what God is, or or he's a knife. Well, technically, fucking tomato isn't a goddamn know, vegetable. Right? Well, no, they had fruits and vegetables on there, right? Yeah, yeah. Did they? Why they make the Brussels sprouts like old Jews? <laughs> it's because they're fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, uh, I like how the recently the uh, what was it, the creator of Veggie Tales came out, mm-hmm. um, and he said. What was it? Because people were questioning the whole like tomato being a vegetable. And he's like, hey, that's actually a fruit. And then he came out and just to fuck with all the religious people, he's like, he identifies as a vegetable. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, A lot of people were pissed about that. Oh, wow. It's like, it's a fucking kid show. That's a funny joke, too. That's a pretty funny joke. You gotta, you gotta admit, like, yeah. okay, kudos to you. Because I think the the original creator, he was like, uh, before he was like uber religious, but then afterwards he kind of like fell out of it because he saw the bullshit that was behind. The You'd scenes. be surprised who like, like who a lot of these people behind these cartoons, like like who they are in real life. Like, I mean, like the whole fallout with the guy who wrote Dilbert. He ended up becoming like a fucking super racist. Oh yeah, that was so fucking weird. Because he was basically like, "What's the point of helping black people if they're just gonna hate you for being white?" Anyways, <laughs> and the, the newspapers were like, eh, "We're gonna just take you off." Yeah, and then the, the other thing that happened with um, uh, uh what the fuck is what that? if Garfield like one the one, guy one like comic strip one day of Garfield was just like, you know what, the Jews had it coming. No, the one. With- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I doubt it. Actually, yeah. the guy who made Garfield is actually a really smart dude. He always yeah. talked about, like, one of the things that he always um, tried to focus on with Garfield comics was to never do topical things because it dates the comic. Yeah. Always make sure that the jokes have nothing to do with anything that's actually going on in real life. Lasagna. Yeah. Just keep it simple, and then the, the, the comic strip becomes timeless. God oh damn, God, dog. Dude. It's fucking pasta, bro. Oh, Jesus Christ. I had I'm some gonna, chicken meatballs. I'm going to cut a fan on. Uh, <laughs> I need some ventilation in here. No, the thing I was going to say is the, the shit that they found out about the guy who made Ren and Stimpy, how he was basically grooming. Uh, he was grooming like a 16-year-old girl. Bro, are you fucking serious? Yeah. What? Yeah, since like the inception of like Ren and Stimpy, I think he had like a, he had a weird connection with like a girl from a family he was friends with, and he basically like... Up until the point that she turned eighteen, was basically grooming her to be his bride. Oh wow! Yeah, That's and then creepy. people came, people have found out about it, and they're just like, "How am I not surprised that the guy who made Ren and Stimpy is a fucking pervert?" Oh, dude, but Ren and Stimpy's so funny. Uh, I know I, you don't like it, but I liked it. No, I don't. Stupid. I don't dislike it. It's just like for me, it just never like caught on. Like I, it, the the style of animation was just gross. Like, yeah, just the way it looks, it's just like, oh, God. I don't mind the gross, like, aesthetic of it. Yeah. It's just kind of like, I just thought the jokes were just, like, just leaned one way majority yeah. of the time. They were just kind of like, here's a perverted joke. And then there's also the non-perverted one. I'm changing out my fucking nicotine thing. Oh. I ran out. Trying to, trying to reload. Come on, man. I've been puffing it like a motherfucker because I'm on conspiracy hour right now. <laughs> my brain is working. 
the fucking hamster in my brain is fucking running full tilt, dog. It's connecting all the red lines. Right now, he just fucking did that thing where he stops and just rides the fucking, like... <laughs> Bro, have you seen that TikTok uh, live stream of the hamsters and the wheels and stuff? Mm -mm. It's just, like, a whole, like, little box full of hamsters, and they all have, like, little wheels and shit. And they're playing, like, hard step, like, like dubstep shit. Yeah. It's just like... <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> 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 or uh, the oh, sh I shrimp rave. No, no, yeah, I've seen the shrimp rave. I love shrimp rave. I no, I, I've seen the one where they take the hamster and they make like a little D and D castle adventure for it. Where oh it has to, yeah, like, those has are to cool. Get through it. That, that's really yeah. fucking awesome. Oh god, I got so dude talking about TikTok, dude. I, it was last night. I was on the toilet and I started crying because uh, I, did you ever come across the uh, the TikToks of uh, Tater Tot? Uh no. Rest in peace, Tater Tot. What, what, who is Tater Tot? It's a little. It's a little kitten. And it had all its legs were all jacked up, so they try to fix his front legs, and they had yes, little casts. yeah, yeah, he yeah. Fucking died, dude. What? Yeah, I saw. And then they had like a little slideshow of like him doing like little ki like cute kitten things. And then the last picture, bro, the last fucking picture. Put it up if you can. It's, it's uh, they put little, you know how like do little little paw print things. Mm -hmm. It's his little paw prints. And they're all, like, jacked up and shit, dude. Ugh. Oh, God. I was on the toilet, like. <laughs> I, no, the one TikTok that oh, fucked God, me up. Dude. The one TikTok that fucked me up the most, I fucking hate when people do this. Because I don't, I'm not, I'm never prepared for it. Mm. Was whenever they take the audio from the office of Michael leaving. Whenever, like, a dog is about to, like, be put down. Yeah. And it was the one of that really big, like, old-looking bulldog. And I, I don't know what the fuck it was, but it just, like, murdered me inside. Mm -hmm. Because it's, like, that's a reality that we're all eventually going to have to face whenever, like, you know, we have pets. Yeah. You know, these are not going to be the, the, these are not the first and they're not the last pets that we'll ever have. But it's, like, that feeling of having that pet taken away from you mm -hmm. is just fucking, uh, I can't describe it. Oh, shit, it's August. Yeah, yeah, what about it? Got this 12. Damn. She's 12 years old, bro. Yeah. Ugh, I'm she, not ready. Ah, she's going to make it to 20, dog. <sighs> she fucking better. She better make it to 30. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> like, I mean, yeah. I, I've, I've, heard, I've actually I've heard of some cats living up to, like, 25. Yeah, they get fucking old. They get yeah, there. but, I mean, it really just depends on, like, their overall health and yeah. just, like, how well-maintained they are. She's still spry for her age, too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she I doesn't. Need to, I need to start putting your food lower. Like, she looks older, but she doesn't look like yeah. she's, like, you know, she doesn't look like she's, like, a decrepit old cat. No. But she'll, she's slow to get up now sometimes. Like, you'll see her and she'll do a little extra stretch to kind of, like, liven back up. Like, this year, I was having, like, a little bit of, like, an emotional breakdown because of it. Because, like, like my oldest dog now is five, and I'm just, mm -hmm. like, fucking five years have passed since we got her. We got her as a puppy. Yeah, we well, bought her as yeah. a puppy, and, like, now the thing about her being five is like, yeah, she's still young. She still has like a good, like solid amount of years left. Yeah. But it's just like, fuck, like it, it, you know, it makes you reflect a lot on life. Cause I know like, I feel like. How much has happened since you got her? I mean, a lot, man, yeah. just from like moving and then just like, you know, just seeing her grow and just seeing like how yeah. she's like, how, how smart she's gotten, how like, like. When, with certain with with pets you you pick up on their their personalities yeah and you realize that the like every pet is uniquely its own thing yeah. you know like like i mean me and my wife got torn up whenever we lost our cat right yeah. and we were like you know he was his own entity like we were very um you know we were very slow to want to get another cat mm -hmm. you know we almost didn't get the, the cat that we got now because, you know, there's always that feeling of, like, I don't want to get a cat that's going to replace, yeah. like, the cat that was here. But the truth is, it's not replacing. Because every, every like, you're not going to get a cat that's going to be an identical clone of the one you've had before. And the same goes with, like, a dog. It's always a new thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be unfair for me to not give another animal a chance after we gave that animal a chance. Because, you know, we, yeah. if we rescue one animal... And we kept it for as long as we could until, like, it passes from, like, health issues or whatever, maybe, or age, you know. It's not going to stop me from continuing to carry on rescuing animals because there's more animals out there that need that love. 
and it's 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 it's, yeah. it's go to go to your local pet shelters and adopt. Don't buy new animals. And and pet pet love and pet loss are two real fucking things. Yeah. And anybody who understands it understands it. And don't criticize them for like saying that like you know, it it it's like no different than you know losing a family member because yeah. it is. It's l- it, yeah. My I've had my cat for twelve years. Yeah. How much shit has happened in those twelve years in my life? Mm-hmm. Like. You know, I moved to like two different other states. I got out of a shitty relationship. I, I met my wife. I uh, mean, think about all the dogs that we had growing up yeah. that we lost. We were Rocky and Homie, our Rocky fucking and Homie, bro. Um, uh, uh, I had Muñeca, the Golden Retriever, Spunky, Spunky. I yeah. remember Spunky. Uh, Megatron. Megatron. Yeah, that was a good dog, man. I felt bad for that dog. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't remember when he passed. Um, because he um, what happened was uh. We would leave him out back at our place because he was fine. <laughs> and, uh, no, like, he um, he was a good dog. Like, he never, yeah. like, bit or did anything stupid or anything like that. And these shithead neighborhood kids uh, took him. And well, I couldn't find him for a while. I was like, what the fuck? Where's the dog at? And I see him uh, struggling walking down the road, like, where we used to live over there in, like, in, in town. Like, you know, the little road that goes to the house. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw him. I saw him, like, struggling to walk back. He was coming back from the mountain. They took him up there and they beat the fuck out of him, dude. So he was crawling his way back. So oh I went and picked God. him up. He had cigarette burns. He was all beat up and shit. We took him to the vet and they're like, yeah, he's pretty beat up, but he's fine. And after that, um, he became a little meaner. Damn. Like he would like, like lunge at the, he would lunge at uh, the people when he, they were walking he, in the back. He got traumatized. Yeah. And uh, what ended up happening is uh, we couldn't keep him anymore where we were moving, so, um, or where we lived, uh, because people were complaining about him. So my our, our aunt, the AV, took him, mm-hmm. and she, you know, she took care of him. She, they, her kids, they made him a nice little area in the back where he doesn't have to be all chained up or anything, or on a leash or anything. So he was he was having a good life, but then he got out one day and he he bit a kid, Ugh. and I think it happened like twice. So then finally they were like, Hey, you have to put this dog down. Damn. So they had to put him down. But he yeah. was a good he was a good dog. I miss that dog. Yeah. I used to love hearing your mom call its name. Yeah. <laughs> make make a thron. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but no, he was funny because he was like a he was like a Chihuahua whippet mix. Yeah. So he was just shaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, I fucking hate yeah. like those kind of stories of people being cruel of animals. I mean, you know, like our dog yeah. was a rescue too, and it, it, he's traumatized and has like scars on his neck from a family that oh, didn't give yeah. a fuck about him, you know? And I just don't understand, like, what goes through the mindset of a person who just wants to be cruel to an animal for no reason? Yeah. For the longest time, uh, our other our dog, Sunny, she's seven now. Mm-hmm. Um, if I wore a hat, she would just go fucking ballistic. Like, she wouldn't bite me, but she would start cowering away from me, barking at me. Oh, shit. And I guess someone, like, was beating her, like, when she was a stray. She had, like, somebody that used to wear a hat. Yeah, or something. Yeah. So, yeah, so, like, I had to get her used to it. Like, I would put the hats on the ground so she could smell them and, like, kind of, like, put it on, take it off. Yeah. And, like, hold on to it, keep it on my lap or on the table. And then, finally, she's fine with it now. But if a stranger comes with a hat, it kind of, like, you see it kind of click for her. And you see her backing away, like, her hairs all fucking standing up and shit yeah yeah and then oreo is just a fucking <laughs> slut <laughs> it was the man in the big yellow hat <laughs> fucking uh curious george's guy he was fucking that monkey yeah he was no okay one I'm you're curious george i mean it, it's obvious that the man in the big yellow hat okay one, one for one why did they call him the man in the big yellow hat his whole outfit was yellow yeah. And who actively wears all yellow, goes to a jungle, takes a chimp back home to New York City? It doesn't make any sense. He's yeah, fucking that monkey. Yeah, he fell in love with that thing. Poor monkey. Yeah. Poor George. He That's, was just too curious, man. He's too curious, yeah. dog. He was peeling that banana back. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and he was dressed as yellow, dog. That's why. He's, <laughs> no teeth. <laughs> he's like, come, come peel me up, boy. Oh, God. But then Curious George got his revenge and just, like, went fucking ape shit. Yeah, probably. Up, probably. It's happened a lot. These dumbass white women who try to think that they can keep oh, a chimpanzee. Yeah, and they just Christ. get fucking torn Did apart. Did you see the picture of her face? 
Uh, no. God, it fucked her. Well, shit she was up. fucking up this damn chimp. She was giving it like fucking like uh, like downers and shit like that. Yeah, she yeah. was giving it a lot of fucking drugs to keep him mellow. Yeah, and then the the chimp kept trying to escape. Yeah, because it was like this this lady is drugging this me. Bitch is trying to kill me. And then when it finally was able to like at least escape her long enough to where the fucking medicine wore off, she he just ripped this bitch apart. Yeah, he was like, it ain't gonna happen again. I mean, that's just animal justice. Yeah, I mean, they ended up having to shoot it. Yeah. I mean, he died at least for some vengeance. But still, animal justice was served. Yeah. Speaking of animal justice, uh, shout out to all the orcas out there. Ew, 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 ew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because and, I'm, I'm, and, I'm not, and I'm not just talking about my exes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, they're out there. Uh, they're out there hitting uh, yachts still. So, oh, for real? Yeah, they're out there fucking up yachts. Goddamn, just fucking up these goddamn fishermen. Yeah, no, they're yachts. Yachts? Like, oh. Rich people's stuff. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're over there like fucking ramming that shit, trying to sink them and everything. And I think they sunk a few. Just find out you that's how uh, Jeff Bezos dies. He just gets stabbed by a fucking like narwhal. Oh, God, that'd be the best, dude. Uh, when would, they stab him, he like explodes because of all the evil energy just dissipates into the world. Yeah. It's like when Sauron uh, dies in Lord of the Rings. Like, everyone gets sucked in because of the energy he's blown in. And just it can't be a coincidence that as soon as he became the richest man in the world, he started looking like Lex Luthor. He did, didn't he? Yeah, he just got jacked yeah. out of nowhere, and then he got bald. He divorced his wife, got some fucking bimbo with some huge tits on his side, dude. And then he gave up, like, the whole Amazon, but he still makes all that money. And he just walks around all yoked out yeah. and fucking... So who's Superman? Yeah, I... Huh? Who's Superman then? Who's Superman? I mean, who? I don't know. Andrew Tate. <laughs> <laughs> We're fucked. <laughs> what if Superman was just like the biggest Chad ever? Uh, like God. he still like save people, but he did it like in a really obnoxious way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like uh, Jonah Jameson is like Alex Jones. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. J. J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Jonah Jameson. Well, that's what they made him into the, uh, in the Spider-Man games, the PS4 or PS5 one. Yeah. Yeah. The, he, it's basically, he has a podcast instead of a newspaper. And, uh, like you hear the podcast every now and then it's him just ranting like Alex Jones. Yeah. And it's uh, voiced by uh, J.K. Simmons. Mm-hmm. All I, like, that, dude. I like that. How they, the, like everyone was like, no, that's J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. Even in the comics, it looks like him now. Or, like, it looked like they made him look like him, but now they're making it look more like the actor. You know, originally they thought about using uh, Stan Lee as that character because he thought he would be fun. But then uh, he saw his, like, audition. It was just like, no, he's he's way better than me. Yeah. Like, which, I mean, that, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously. I mean, Stan wasn't exactly, like, an actor. He just did mm-hmm. the cameo parts, which, yeah. you know, you know, R.I.P. Stan, the man. Stan the man. Yeah, he's he was the he was the true OG. Yeah. Well, him and uh, what's his name, Jack Kirby. Yeah, Jack Kirby. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, uh, did you ever watch that one documentary about like the whole like them unveiling the whole like story of how like um, uh, Bob Kane wasn't like like fully responsible for Batman no. as a whole. So basically, like um, the whole concept that was Batman came from a came from a from another guy who he had asked help with because he was like unveiling this new character called Batman, right? Yeah. And the whole Ooh. like original concept of him just didn't really match him. And the the guy that was helping him, I if I remember, I think his name was like something God damn it. I, there's a whole documentary about it. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. Um, that that in itself is a whole fucking like episode, but basically he came up with all the original concepts for Batman. He was like, no, Batman should look like this. He should dress like this. Yeah. He should change the art like this, right? And then he was talking about like, okay, like, what what are you thinking about like making? Like, he's a mi- millionaire like like vigilante, and then this guy basically went off and he wrote like. Basically, the original script of who Batman is as a person, who Bruce uh, Wayne is as a person, yeah. and then basically he came up with the concepts for the Riddler, the the Joker, um, you know, all the original characters. Like, and then he got zero credit for it because basically when it got to the the only credit, he, uh, they bought the the rights from because he didn't think it was going to take off or something like that. I think no, no, no. He was just he was basically like Bob Kane's like ghostwriter. Oh, okay. And then the only thing he ever was able to get his like any recognition for is he wrote an episode for 
um, the uh, what's it called the um, the old Batman show that had like the goofy Batman uh, oh, Adam uh, West Adam, Adam West, West Batman. Yeah. And then he said that the only recollection that anybody ever had about him ever like getting any recognition was from one of those episodes where he got to see his name on the credits and then he like teared up about him. But this man like oh my god, this man's name just faded faded into obscurity. Yeah, uh, he didn't have any living relatives, so they found him like dead in his apartment. I guess he just had like some heart issues or something, yeah. and he got buried in on in he got buried. Uh, uh, in a unmarked grave because he didn't have any close family. They found out that he did have close family eventually. Yeah. But apparently what they found out is he had a distant son that he didn't know about, but even his son ended up passing away of AIDS Damn. because his son was like active in the gay community. And he was like, apparently one of like the first people in like us in like a, a big group of San Fran, like, um, like liberal gays that ended up like contracting like AIDS during the yeah. first epidemic and ended up passing. It's, it's crazy. That's sad. <sighs> All right. Well, that was vacation Bible school, I think. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's been a long episode. I feel yeah, like I was... haven't stopped talking for a while. We talked a lot. Yeah. We had a lot of shit. Conspiracy lo- corner went fucking far. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like I said, man, that's what the knife funk's about, dog. Yeah. It's about It's talking. keeping you up at night. You need to fucking sleep. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I got work tomorrow. <laughs> and I can't be coming through this like, bro, everything's a lie. <laughs> the walls, they're fucking listening, man. <laughs> don't you fucking hear it, man? The don't buzz. Let me, let me, don't let me get started on that. Yeah. I'm starting to fucking duct tape my phone at night. <laughs> like, I don't want them to hear me. You wake up, it's on du- duct tape with a little note saying, don't do that again. They're recording my farts so they can clone me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're going to get me today, man. <laughs> oh, they already got three clones ready in the tubes and yeah. everything. We will make the ultimate Samoan. <laughs> I'm not Samoan. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> but this one has a ukulele built into him. <laughs> it just comes out his chest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Samoans will play a ukulele. Huh? It's Hawaiians. Yeah. Okay. What, is this a fucking geography lesson? No, it's a culture lesson. <laughs> Whatever, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Oh, God. <laughs> Way to ruin it. <laughs> Anyways, thanks again, everybody, for listening to another episode of The Night Funk. You can catch us here every Friday on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And, of course, we're on YouTube, too. So make sure to find us on YouTube. You know, like, comment, subscribe, all that fucking shit. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, you can find us at Instagram at the Night Funk Podcast. You can also find us on TikTok at the Night Funk Podcast, you know. And, of course, uh, you can find us at our personals. You can find me on Instagram at Handful of Pedro. And I'm also in the woods. And as always, you know, episodes every Friday. Um, please, by all means, wherever you find us you know hit up the comments give us some suggestions for future episodes tell us what you think about the most recent episodes or what we're talking about and you know let's just uh have a conversation i'd love to see where it goes also guys hit up the discord yeah hit that shit up i haven't checked in a while but i think we had like one person join it but the thing is it's so inactive because not a lot of people are there but i i really want to push more of community shit um in the future now that we're getting a lot more followers um yeah, it'll be fun to... Uh, humble brag much? No. <laughs> yeah, actually. Uh, since Shit, we're fucking man. blowing up. like <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, it'll be cool to, you know, see what y'all... What's keeping the fuck y'all up, man. Yeah, for real. Yeah. All right, but, yeah, thanks again for listening. Thank you for all the love and support, and as always, we'll see y'all next Friday. Bye! Tiananmen Square. I got one more conspiracy if you're ready for it. No, just... Come on, just one more. Just one Save more. it for the next one. <laughs> <laughs>